from all accounts, the kidnappers of budding Major League Baseball star Wilson Ramos targeted him for kidnapping. Police say the perpetrators followed Ramos. A spokeswoman for his local team says what happened next at the family's home in Venezuela. The individuals first circled the house and looked around and then proceeded to take him, a gunpoint of course. Since that moment on Wednesday evening, an excruciating period for the family of the 24-year-old Washington Nationals catcher. Publicly, the family isn't saying much, giving no indications that they've had contact with the kidnappers or heard any ransom demands. But security expert Chris Voss says privately... Well, more than likely someone is talking to the kidnappers. Um, this is the, the degree of publicity that this is getting now down there actually is a little bit dangerous because it may potentially limit the kidnappers' options, it may make them a little bit more worried about getting caught and not being able to get away. Police say witnesses have given them descriptions of at least two suspects. They say the kidnappers tried to burn a vehicle they used. The Nationals really aren't commenting at all on this case other than a general statement of support for the families. Chris Voss says it's likely the Nationals are helping out behind the scenes, not necessarily with money, but with help in bringing in experts to aid in the negotiations. Negotiations that will be delicate and may become more intense as time passes. Voss, a former FBI negotiator who's worked more than 100 kidnappings, including eight in Venezuela, took us inside the process. As a negotiator, what are you saying to the kidnappers right now? Well, you're being, we're being deferential. Um, we're needing to let them know that we need to know that he's alive. And we're going to link his safety and well-being to the payment of a ransom. Police and family members have given indications that they believe Wilson Ramos is alive. Chris Voss says if he were involved, he would advise the family to pay a ransom in one payment, but not too soon. He says if they pay a ransom too soon, the kidnappers may, as he says, double down, call the family back and say they want more money and not turn their loved one back to them, Wolf. We know there have been other instances in Venezuela of kidnappings, but of family members of baseball right. players, not necessarily the baseball players themselves. It's extraordinary when you look at it. We checked the records on this. Over the past seven years, relatives of four Major League Baseball players have been kidnapped in Venezuela. In three of those instances, they were returned safely. In one instance, 2008, the brother of Venezuelan-born uh, player Henry Blancos of the Arizona Diamondbacks was kidnapped and killed. This is the first time that we know of of an active major league player being kidnapped in that part of the world. They're definitely targets, though. They have money. Everyone around them knows it. These are small towns some of them live in. Not much security. Police are sometimes lax, and that's what we're told is going on in Venezuela right yeah, now. Yeah, if they go back home, they've got to have security. They've got to be careful. That's key. Otherwise, just don't go home.